Hey there my wedding planning friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer, I'm a wedding planner based in Montana and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So today's video, we're gonna talk all about wedding ceremonies, which I, mean, I feel like I haven't done a ton of videos on and it is uh, arguably the most important part of your wedding. So today's video is kind of your, your guide to wedding ceremonies, what goes into the processional, who's going to be involved in the processional. And if you're somebody that is doing kind of a non-denominational wedding ceremony and you have a family member or a friend that is going to be officiating, you kind of need to plan your ceremony structure out yourself. So this video will hopefully help you out there as well. disclaimer we're going to talk about the details of the wedding processional in this video and kind of the overall standard outline for a wedding ceremony and this is primarily for wedding ceremonies that i am familiar with so traditional like christian catholic and a little bit on jewish weddings I recognize that there are other religions and other traditions that go into different types of wedding ceremonies. And so this video is primarily on my knowledge on the weddings that I do here in the US in mostly the state of Montana. So I'm not trying to exclude other types. I just didn't want to make a video on topics that I am not knowledgeable on. So again, this video is mostly on um, ceremony traditions and processionals and outlines for the uh, traditional wedding that I see in Montana. So let's talk about the processional first. I get questions about this all the time as far as like who's involved in your processional, what exactly is it, how long does it take, what should I plan for and all that. So the wedding processional is basically when your wedding ceremony starts and you're walking down the aisle. Everyone that is walking down the aisle is included in what's called your processional. So when it comes to who's included in your processional, this is potentially determined by the type of wedding you're having, um, your religion, the tradition, or you know just your own personal preference. So traditionally in a Christian wedding ceremony, the processional looks something like this. You'll have your officiant, whoever's officiating the wedding, either start at the beginning of the altar and kind of stand under the altar or where you plan to get married to initiate the start of the processional, or they will walk down the aisle and there's a couple placements you can put them here, either at the very front to initiate the beginning of the processional, or with the grooms. So typically the mother of the bride is the first one to walk down the aisle and a lot of times um, she is accompanied by a male family member and so this can be maybe a, a sibling of the bride or a sibling of the groom even, um, a cousin, a brother, an uncle, whoever that might be um, to accompany the mother of the bride down the aisle. I've also seen some other, some groomsmen walk the mother of um, the bride down the aisle. If that is something that you plan to do, just make sure that it's a groomsman that isn't one of the first people to walk down so that they have a chance to walk down, seat the mother of the bride, and then circle around to come back into the their processional order. So mother of the bride first, and then the groom. And the groom can either walk solo with the officiant or with one or both parents. So typically the groom will walk with at least the mother, his mother, um, sometimes with both parents. So that's kind of a personal, personal preference for you. Then comes the bridal party. A common practice that will happen for a kind of traditional wedding ceremony that's taking place in a church is to have the groom and the groomsmen come off from the side rather than walking all the way down the aisle. So you have kind of an option here on how you want to do that. So either the groomsmen will kind of file in from the back or the side and they would file in um, kind of opposite order of how you would if you were walking down the aisle. So the groom obviously and then it would go best man first so that they are standing closest to the groom and then in line of who stands furthest away. So that's one option. And then the bridesmaids would come kind of single file down the aisle um, individually. The other option is to of course have them paired together. So a bridesmaid and a groomsman paired together. If you do have this happening walking down the aisle, you want to order them the opposite order. So you're going to have the maid of honor and the best man, whoever is standing closest to the bride and groom, they're going to be at the back of the line. So they're gonna be the last ones to walk in. That way, when they're walking down the aisle, you file in from the furthest away and fill in to the closest. So those are the two options of how to have the bridal party walk in, but they will be the next in order. Like I said, best man and maid of honor will be will walk in last if you are doing it paired or walking down the aisle. And then after them will be flower girls or ring bears if you choose to have those. And then following the ring bearer and flower girl will be the bride. And traditionally the bride will walk down the aisle with her father or a father figure. Quick note on flower girls and ring bearers. If you're, depending on their age, typically my rule of thumb is six years old and below. Um, if you have a ring bearer, ring bearer under that age, use a decoy ring. Don't let them actually carry the rings down the aisle and just have them carry the pillow with nothing on it or use like a fake ring or something to kind of symbolize them being a ring bearer without them having the responsibility of carrying the rings and either have your officiant or the best man have um, both rings already with him. 
So once everyone's down the aisle, typically um, you will have the bride on the left, groom on the right, and then bridesmaids on the left, groomsmen on the right, and the family of the bride will sit on the left. And I'm, by left and right, I'm talking about like if you're facing the altar on the left side. So bride's family on the left and groom's family on the right. When it comes to Catholic weddings, um, this process and the order is pretty much the same, although there there's typically more family involvement. So a lot of times we'll include grandparents, other siblings, but everything else is mostly the same with the exception of having chairs um, typically in the front for the bridal party because with a Catholic ceremony, it's much longer than um, kind of a Christian or non-denominational non wedding ceremony. So typically the bridal party will, will sit at some point and same with the bride and groom, they typically have chairs where they will sit at some point during the ceremony as well. But as far as the kind of processional order, it's pretty much the same. In a non-denominational wedding ceremony, so if you're not getting married in a church, if you are not having a priest or a pastor or anyone like that performing your wedding, you're having a family member or a friend that has gotten ordained that is performing your, your wedding ceremony, this would be considered a non-denominational wedding ceremony. And you pretty much can do whatever you want here when it comes to your processional and your wedding ceremony and who is included. Um, most of the time I see very similar to a Christian wedding, the only difference being most of the time the bridal party will be paired rather than having the, the groomsmen kind of walk in from the back or the side. They're typically always paired off. And like I said, you have maid of honor and best man in the back. Um, you can also include whoever you want as far as family members go, or you don't need to include anybody if you don't want to. Um, I find most couples will include both sets of parents if possible in some way, shape or form. And a lot of times siblings as well, if they're not already in, in the bridal party. But this is totally up to you and however you want to include people in your wedding processional, there is really no right or wrong answer. In Jewish weddings, again, pretty similar. However, grandparents are typically always included if possible in the processional and the family sides are swapped. So the bride's family is traditionally on the right and the groom's family is traditionally on the left. Also, it's common for the groomsmen to walk in first and for them to be paired off, not paired with bridesmaids, with the best man coming in last and typically solo. And then the bridesmaids doing the same thing, them being paired off with each other, maid of honor being last. Also, a lot of times the groom is in between the, the uh, groomsmen and the bridesmaids. So it would be the groomsmen first, the best man, and then the groom, and then the bridesmaids, maid of honor. And then ring bearer flower girls, if that's something that you are choosing to do. A lot of times the bride will have both parents walk down the aisle in a Jewish wedding as well. And some couples even choose to have their parents stand at the altar with them. So if you are somebody that is having a non-denominational wedding and you have a family member or a friend or somebody that does not do this professionally, perform your wedding, you're likely going to have to come up with your kind of ceremony structure yourself or work with your officiant to do this. As if you are getting married in some sort of religious ceremony or in a church, um, whoever is performing your wedding will walk you through this and kind of set up the, the overall program for you. You won't really have to, to do too much here. So when it comes to your wedding processional, typically it will take a total of three to five minutes for everyone to get down the aisle. Again, this can vary depending on how many people you have included in your processional, in your bridal party, and how long of the aisle um, of the space that you're getting married in. Is. So this will likely determine how long your overall processional is. As far as music goes, most couple will most couples will choose two songs. You'll have um, what's called the interlude that will play prior to the first person that walks on the aisle for the processional, and then you'll have your first processional song, which is what the family members and the bridal party will walk down to. If you do have a lot of family member this, members that you are including in your processional, I've had some couples choose a separate song for them as well, maybe a shorter one or one that you can easily fade out into something else and only play a little bit in the beginning. Um, but that's again, totally personal preference and what you wanna do there. But typically you'll have one song for the processional and then one song for the what's known as the bridal march for when the bride walks down the aisle. So for the order of events, if you are planning your own ceremony, typically, this is what a kind of standard ceremony will look like. So we have the prelude that we just talked about, which kind of gets all of the guests seated, have a DJ maybe make, make an announcement to get everyone seated that we're going to be starting soon. Then you'll have the processional and then typically words of welcome, which is done by your officiant kind of thanking everyone for coming, maybe a few opening remarks. And and then we'll go into kind of their introduction, um, which is often including a story of the couple, maybe how they are involved in their lives, um, stories from the beginning of their relationship, usually tying in some personal 
um, anecdotes here before getting into the actual formalities of the wedding ceremony. Um, if you plan to have any readings, this is typically when that would occur. And if you do have people that are that you plan to have give readings during your wedding ceremony, make sure that they are seated in a place that's easy for them to get up and out and up front to um, be able to give those readings. So maybe an aisle seat or an end seat, however works best for you in your space. Following that, the officiant would then uh, address the couple and make some remarks about the sanctity of marriage, basically leading up into what's going to come next, which are the vows. When it comes to exchanging wedding vows, you have the option to either use traditional vows, in which case the officiant will provide those for you, or to write your own, which obviously you will have yourself. If you are writing your own vows, I would recommend giving having a copy given to the officiant prior to your wedding or to your maid of honor or best man, or just having a couple copies regardless and, and make sure that your officiant has a cop copy. That way you don't have to carry it down the aisle or have it get ruined by anything and be difficult to read. Following the vows, if you plan to do any sort of unity ceremony, this is a good time to do that in between the vows and before the rings. And then after a unity ceremony, if that's something you choose to do, will come the rings. So you exchange rings, usually accompanied by some words and promises to each other. And then following the rings is the kiss. This is what officially seals you as a married couple. And then following that is the pronouncement of you being a married couple, which is usually if you are planning on changing your last name and having the same last name, usually introduced as this shared couple with the last name for the first time. Quick note too, if you are a bride, make sure that at this pronoun pronouncement, which typically you'll kiss, everyone will cheer, and you two will kind of turn and face your, your guests as the officiant is making this announcement and declaring you as husband and wife or whatever you are becoming. Make sure that you turn and grab your, your bouquet from your maid of honor so that you have that when you're walking back down the aisle. That's something that I always have to remind brides when we're going through the rehearsal. So make sure you grab that before you walk down the aisle and then you're officially married. Typically the officiant will make some closing remarks. A lot of times if this is a religious ceremony, they'll do some type of um, prayer or blessing before ending the ceremony before you walk down the aisle. Um, but after that, you're married and you're done. And then what happens next is called the recessional, which is basically the opposite of the precessional, which is um, you two, the married couple is obviously first to go down the aisle. Typically you wanna wait till they get all the way to the end of the aisle so that you have um, opportunities for, for those photos before people are walking in behind you. And then just like walking down the aisle, the bridal party will then pair off and walk back down the aisle in the opposite direction. So maid of honor and best man, since they're closest, will meet in the middle, walk down the aisle and so on and so forth until everyone is down the aisle. So there you have it. Hopefully that helps you put together your wedding ceremony and your processional. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. And we'll see you next week.